Hello beautiful people and welcome to the channel. Reverend Debbie here, hope you're all doing well. Today's video I'm going to talk about putting boundaries in place. Now when we have experienced a narcissistic relationship, we have probably got no boundaries left. And I'm talking about those boundaries of saying yes and no. Because the narcissist will always push you until you say yes. If you're an empathic person, you probably say yes to a lot of people all the time because otherwise you'll feel guilty if you don't. And that's something that, that we need to work on um, as a person, as ourselves, as getting rid of that guilt. That's for a different video. So now when that relationship is over, you need to start putting those boundaries back in place. Before I get into the body of the video, if you enjoy it, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. I really, really need some more subscribers. Um, I know a lot of you come back to the channel, but you're not subscribed. Um, it would really help me if you could subscribe. Also, please click the like button because it shows me the um, subject matter that I'm talking about is what you enjoy. Also, pop something into the comments if you like, something that you would like me to cover around narcissistic behavior, um, toxic abuse, feminism, um, witchcraft even, whatever you would like me to discuss, pop something in the comments below and uh, I can have a look at uh, researching and writing a script for it. So, you have experienced the most painful relationship you are ever going to have in your life. And it may well be that you've met more than one narcissistic personality type and had relationships with them. In fact, it's quite um, common that women who have been in abusive relationships and men and men will choose another abusive partner. Not that they know this person's abusive, but it is a psychological um, kick, if you like, that we believe that we need to fix people and help people. So one bit of advice that I always give everybody, and it's another video on its own, but if you have ended a narcissistic relationship, try to spend at least a year healing yourself before you even attempt a new relationship. You have a lot of healing to do and a lot of boundaries to put in place. And you will now start to recognize those boundaries, perhaps as you go into the dating world once again. Now, many of you won't want to date and that's fine. Your choice is your choice. I guess it depends on the age of the person as well. I find that middle aged to older women tend to say, well, I'm not going to bother again because I'm actually enjoying my life on my own. Whereas a younger woman may say, well, I really want to be in a relationship. I want to be married. I want to have children. There is nothing wrong with either view. Either view is valid to you. So don't feel that if you're young, you have to remain single for the rest of your life. And don't feel that if you are middle aged and above that you have to remain single for the rest of your life. You live your life as you want to. But... This most painful event that you have gone through with the narcissist, this breakup, this destroying of every single thing you ever knew, is the most painful, hurtful part of the narcissistic relationship. OK, besides possible physical and sexual abuses that may go on. But it is incredibly painful. And I know that many of you have got long lasting trauma and possibly complex trauma. And that's something that needs to be worked on, preferably with a therapist. But you can obviously do your own work. You can watch videos like this, read books and so on to find out what you can do to heal. There are many sites on uh, YouTube and the Internet where you can have a look at what uh, the behavior type is of a narcissistic personality disorder, as well as your healing process. But you will feel as if your heart has been ripped out of your chest and you may well feel that there's nothing left within you. You probably feel bereft, open, empty and filled with pain, filled with hurt, 
that's normal. But it's time to put those boundaries in place. If the narcissist contacts you, keep that boundary in place of no contact. Don't let them rule your life again. They've already messed up your life once, possibly twice, three times, however many times. By letting them back into your life, you are allowing them to do exactly the same again. Remember, guys, a narcissist will never change and they are always right. When you were with them, they were stealing your energy. They were breaking down your boundaries to shape and mould and manipulate and control you into the kind of person that they wanted you to be. Because although the narcissist at the beginning of the relationship would have said, well, I, I like you for who you are, through the relationship, they are going to try to change you. Many narcissistic personality types want a mother. They want somebody who can do for them what they can't, cook, clean, and so on. And of course, many of you become punching bags. So how do we stop going back to them when they call and making sure that we never get sucked back into their despicable behaviour? By putting those boundaries in place, learning to say no. No is a full sentence. If you say no, that's it. You don't need to say anything else. You do not need to explain yourself because once you start explaining yourself, the narcissist will take that as a um, opportunity to try to push you a little bit further. My next wanted his one of his family members to move in with us and my immediate reaction was no. I had various reasons for that and my ex had a temper tantrum, stamping feet, breaking things and until I relented and said, OK, they can come and stay here. Of course, it was a disaster. And um, I do not blame myself for that because I did nothing wrong. However, my narcissistic ex did. So if something makes you feel uncomfortable, put that boundary in place. Don't be scared. As I said, so many empathic people lower their boundaries and feel guilt and feel empathy for other people that they feel that they have to break their boundaries and they have to do things for this person. You don't. It is a personal choice. It's all about learning those two little letters, N-O. So over time, it will become easier for you to put those firm boundaries in place. And it may also be easier for you in future to, if somebody has overstepped those boundaries and made you feel uncomfortable, for you to move away from it, for you to think, well, I don't like this situation. I want my own boundaries back. So recently I um, went to a pagan festival and was camping over the weekend. And of course, I've gone through a lot of trauma, a lot of anxiety, and I do have distrust for many men because of the experiences I've had in my life. And unfortunately, um, it just, one of the evenings, um, <clears throat> I felt that I was being overwhelmed by people that had come to visit me at my tent. and. I felt that boundaries were not being kept. So eventually I asked people to please, I'm going to put my fire out and I'm going to go to bed now. And they actually were understanding and I am pretty much sure that those people are not abusive personality types because they understood my need for a boundary. So if somebody wants you to do something and it's going to inconvenience you and it's going to take away time, things that you were going to do, say no. You are not obligated to anybody to do what they ask you to do. Keep those boundaries in place. Don't let people step in. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you next time. Blessed be.